Hello, welcome back to our coverage of the GOAT here on the Hit or Quit podcast. I am Jenny Autumn, and oh my goodness, do we have a treat for you this week. And no, it is not GOAT meal, uh, because we have assembled uh, a panel here that is titillating to say the least um of course joining me as usual my co-pilot on this uh goat journey uh goat ride i don't know what do you do how do you do you can you ride a, i don't think you should ride a goat anyway Chappelle, Chappelle is hey. here <laughs> yes i have my long rifle my underwear and a bible and i'm ready to Edible. eat ass yeah we're ready to we're ready to eat ass here and no better mm -hmm. person to join us on this ass eating venture than disavow we gotta, disavow we gotta, <laughs> wait we i mean kick ass them. wait pause i i was a mulligan i thought it was kick ass i'm sorry it's eat ass Is oh, that the, see? No? yeah see, Chappelle just misspoke mike it's fine we got mike bloom here ready to kick ass yes please uh don't call me peanut butter call me jelly because i'm <laughs> sticky and purple and I'm thrilled to talk with the two of you about the goat. I have so many questions. Why are you purple? Yeah, and in what way, Mike? Because I've been holding my breath for too long to talk about this oh, show. Oh, wow. Yeah, you are that's smooth. why he's the king. That's why he's the I, king. That's yeah. the thing. I, like, Devon really outed herself as a crunchy peanut butter eater, which honestly makes me look at her sideways. Yeah. <laughs> oh, are you anti-crunchy? Uh, yeah, I mean, I got like, I got sensey teeth. I'm not necessarily yeah. a person that's nice. like, I don't want to add texture necessarily. I was someone who uh, was a very picky eater when I was a child. And so like, I would not do the crunchy peanut butter. I wasn't even, I didn't even eat peanuts themselves until later in life, well past the age where I could drink as an example. And so for me, because I was so indoctrinated into it, I honestly, like, I'm fine with it, but I'm not going crunchy above smooth. See, I buy smooth peanut butter, but when I get surprised with crunchy, like say you go to someone's house and then like they have crunchy, I'm like, it's exciting. Like I'm like, oh yeah, we're we're changing it up here. So uh but but yes, Davon's definition of peanut butter is always crunchy. There's always nuts in it. So that we learned something new here today. Chabelle, what is your way of eating peanut butter? <laughs> I mean, there's nothing like a surprise nut to really get you going, you know, uh, but I personally don't really like peanuts like that. I'm not a peanut butter guy. Okay. Yeah, you know, I, See, I'm anti-jam, so I'm oh. all peanut Oh, anti-jam. Oh, anti That's like my... Like even strawberry I... preserves? Let's talk about it. Mm. Okay, the, the, here's the thing. I have one very... Like, I have some food allergies, but I'm allergic to things that I okay, actually Liz. want to eat. Um, mm -hmm. However, there is... One, I have one food preference that I, I just don't F with fruit in any other form but it's r regular form so i don't like pie i don't like dried fruit i don't like it mushed i don't like preserves i so any me... step after present after fruit plant. to person yeah <laughs> i you want I farm to table fresh fruit the minute you make it warm or mush it up or do other things with it put it in a crust nah it's not for me. Smoothies are like a because I feel like it's I don't know. I there's there's holes in the yeah, logic. I guess, I guess you're you're not preparing it in a way that changes its like state of matter. It seems like you're yeah. really about capturing well, I mean, the present wait, moment. But like <laughs> apple juice, orange. I juice? don't like. I don't really like juice that much. I like oh, orange God. juice, but mostly Chappelle, and you should know it better than anyone. I love I love me a mimosa. Yeah, Chappelle and I will be out here breaking glasses. Uh, okay. Having, Jenny, you threw three <laughs> three mimosas on me at one brunch, and now all of a sudden oh, we're out here breaking glass. Wow. Yeah, we're you're, not you're, even... you're true Bravo lebs if you're throwing drinks <laughs> on each other. He's That's not, on that's not down. Well, all right, yeah. well, Jenny. So if I put like some prunes floating in champagne, would you ingest them that way? Is alcohol oh. the the key here, the middleman catalyst. Yeah. Does the prune soak up the alcohol and then it's mm. like a nice little? I still think the texture of that is really gonna. It's not what gonna. If I, uh, what if I me. ironed the prune for you? Yeah. What if it's <laughs> that smooth sounds as worse. Age? That yeah. sounds worse. <laughs> but yeah, that is my one thing. So I don't mean to insult you, Mike. You did say that you're jelly. Um, and I, that's not for me personally, but I am personally glad that you are here joining us because uh I feel like I feel like that we're back on an uptick here. And and to have you join us 
um, on, a, I, th- I thought, a pretty entertaining episode. Very big brothery. Uh, we had mm-hmm. the house-themed week. Uh, we can talk that through, but I'd love to just hear your, you know, because we're just getting to talk to you right now. How, how have you been feeling about the GOAT? Yeah, and Reza also pulling in Austin, right, from BB-17, right? Basically <laughs> walking out shoeless, goatless. The GOAT, and, you know, we repeat this ad nauseum. I think the show that you two covered, Dondi, is a great example of this, has no reason to be as good as it is. Uh, I think that given the very loose concept and the fact that even going in, none of us were sure how tongue in cheek this was going to yeah. be. Turns out that it is like fully tongue in cheek. Your cheek is out to here from like how far your tongue has poked it. And it's great. And it tongue really... and ass apparently, according to Tosh. Yeah. Tosh is a little freak. <laughs> And I love him so much. He's an absolute freak. Yes. He's Sorry. An absolute, Go on. <laughs> like, it's a man after my own heart. Where I know you talked about this last week with the bee costume of like, I relate so much to yeah, just put me in some sort of ridiculous outfit today. And I will be the monkey that dances for you all. Like, God, that's a man after my own heart. That is Let someone Mike that Bloom I, host the show. Please uh, get, <laughs> get him on my TV. Honestly, I would, I would pay <laughs> Amazon. Already <laughs> okay. If you have to go to get Tosh next time, if, especially please if call my <laughs> I could have to convince everyone that I am Daniel Tosh, if I have to gaslight a new group of reality contestants into believing that I am Daniel Tosh, I don't think I would have a Joey out there to say how much he loved Tosh 2.0. So I think I could get away with it. But <laughs> all that being said, uh, you know, I think that. Usually I'm not a big fan of what Amazon usually does. It's like, oh, we'll drop the first three at once, then we'll air the rest later. I do think this was a perfect package of first three episodes, of course, culminating in the most like ridiculous idea you could have in your mind as a reality TV fan, which is Alyssa Edwards uh, say implying, uh, or explicitly saying that Kristen from Vanderpump Rules is an alcoholic, uh, prompting a housewife fight that culminates in Alyssa Edwards nearly leaving the game and Reza saying he's going to shit his pants out of anxiety. Uh, so admittedly, it was a little bit of like a downtick after that but i feel like finally follow that <laughs> yeah but, but finally it feels like the fires have been rekindling a bit i agree that the double vote last time was very odd you know i am sort of glad it was able to kind of work through as much as i love justin and my love Alyssa. like clearly this was not a game for him so i'm kind of happy he went out the way he did tech is such a chill guy he did not fit in this show for me so it feels like we kind of work through some of these people and now we get down to like all right we took out a couple of the guys and now that we have this this four four or it turns out to be now we're really gonna have to start to take out some heavy hitters and we get a big one in this episode so i've been having a really great time the show takes itself as seriously as its budget implies which to me <laughs> back to those beloved salad days of the early 2000s when they weren't trying to be the challenge and be all high octane. They were just getting a yeah. backyard and paddle across a pool back and forth. There's so much endearment there to me. And so it's both tickling my nostalgia buds while also at the same time bringing something new and bringing all these people together. Yeah. And I, that, I mean, I harp on the low budget challenges, but I, I enjoy them because I can imagine doing them. Like they seem like, because I'm seeing the shit that they're doing on on Survivor or like your mm-hmm. point, Mike, about like shows like the Ch- challenge that would never even happen. I don't even know why it would even. But this I'm like, yeah, uh, I can unscramble words and then have oatmeal dumped on me. Sure. Like, fine. I can. you know, I live like, with a five year old. We call that Tuesday. Exactly. Right. <laughs> So I, I, there's something that's very, uh, like, yeah, it just feels like home. You know, when I look at the goat, I see home. Mm. Um, so I, I, I completely feel like, feel you on that. It's been, uh, it's been a fun ride, but Chappelle and I talked last week and we said, okay, um, you know, we lost some, some fun energy characters last week, but, um, I was worried that we were maybe losing a little bit too many of the people that had, um, possibility of mess and ultimately you know the talking through the votes and some of the strategic elements of this show that we didn't expect can be fun but we also want it to be a little messy um and and we said okay reza's still here I, that's someone who i think is going to continue to give us mess and he certainly did this episode he delivered you know completely on all fronts but 
we end this episode saying goodbye to our friend Reza. And it does have me a little bit concerned about wh what this means going forward. But I think that we've got enough gamer stuff happening in the background that that will hopefully sustain us. But uh, Chappelle, how do you feel about us losing our king of chaos in Reza? I'm sad to see Reza go because Reza, I've only met Reza twice, right? I've met him on The Traders. I was like, and then I met him? him yeah. No, not in Don't real life. Reza would never... Reza makes way too much money to, to ever be seen with me. Okay. Um, but, yeah. But the traders, I saw him once and I was like, hey, that guy seems cool. He seems like a good, like good yeah. television. But he was only there for a little bit. robbed of not having him on yeah. the traders now. Like, after yeah. Exactly. yeah well, I, I think yeah. especially, yeah. If we can maybe askew some of these civilian members of the cast in favor of Reza, maybe they should have come in with like on a Big Brother season when the returnees come in with immunity for the first week. They should have done that with the, the yeah. reality TV people on the traders. Agreed. Oh yeah, for sure. Cause I You're like right. Reza, we only got a taste, but here we get to see Reza in full action and it's so much fun. Um, sadly, this is Reza's fault. Reza has, uh, is, is part of the problem here because Mike, we spent so much time last podcast. I mean, it was one of our longest podcasts trying to figure out what the hell happened with this double elimination vote. And based on what I've seen on Twitter, the, the guys just brain farted. They never shored up the votes. They were like, do what you want to do. Joe will go home. And it never occurred to them to make sure that everybody was voting for the right person in the vote split. This is Wendell and Reza's fault. So, you know, yeah. one of them had to pay the price. Which is why when the map like, I, was important too. Like for yeah. like when it's literally not like, okay, there's a couple different ways things can work out with numbers. This would be the time to just be like, Let's get on the same page here. Well, listen, CJ talks this episode about how uh, reality TV stars don't know how to spell. That's why they're reality TV stars. Maybe numbers are included in that. But yeah, that surprised me as well because of like the two competitive reality, reality TV people, I could understand if Davon would be the one to like mess up a split vote because Big Brother, there's only two choices. Maybe there's three, but usually there's really only two even when there's three. Wendell explicitly worked in an era of Survivor that it was around splitting complicated votes around idols and various advantages. Maybe it was a matter for him of like not corralling the right people at the right time. Maybe it was a matter of like he was complacent in that moment. He has that scene last episode with Joe where he's basically like, yeah, F you, Joe. I'm going to vote yeah. for you, basically, which showed a surprising lack of tact from a guy who literally won a tiebreaker in a million dollar vote because of his social game. Like, yeah. It's a little uncharacteristic of Wendell here in many ways. Also him now being an underdog, him now sort of yeah. being left to his own vices. So yeah, despite like really roaring back in episodes three and four, he's been caught slipping a lot. Mm -hmm. And he lost the number one ally because of it. You know, uh, he was supposed to be the person to make sure that the guys were all lined up. And now we see that Davon and Jill are just running away with this thing. The president is consigliere is, uh, is, is making this thing happen. And I was like, I, I kind of like it. I, I, you know, we've watched Davon on a few reality shows, but Davon in power is kind of fun to watch. I'm appreciating this. Oh year. yeah. Again, it's, it's a, it's a rarity. And I think it's also tough for Davon to like find a partner in crime. Cause it feels like inevitably either she betrays them or they betray her. And look, there's still like a little less than half the season left. The consigliere awesome. might be the one to, you know, stab the, the mafia boss in the back. But this does feel like a rarity for Davon and her reality to keep a career to like kind of have a ride or die in mm -hmm. jail who will, despite being the consigliere, will become the meat shield for Davon in this episode and take the vast majority of the blame, including chiefly from the person who gets eliminated. Well, and and the other thing is, like, not only does she have, you know, a solid ride or die that can hold their own and also win challenges here, um, you know, they, they, Davon's got numbers, like, like, she found herself in a really bad position, only like one, or like a, the episode before last, and suddenly, now back into a position where she's corralled you know, enough people to make what she wants happen. And what a treat for those of us who have been watching Dave on on TV for so long and have been like, we see, we see what could be and we want to see it through and, and just see, you know, how things can get stifled. So I, I'm loving this partnership with Jill. I love that Dave on did not have to win goat again um, this week because you know, she's kind of, she's got to pull back a little bit here. Um, I love that her gr girl Jill showed up here and, uh, you know, that, that will help take some of the heat off of her. That's another potential target. And 
as Reza walks out at the end of this episode, even though he kind of started this episode really gunning for Davon, Davon's name was in his mouth. He ultimately leaves tossing up double birds to Jill saying, you better get Jill out of this fucking house. Like that's, that's what he left saying. And I'm sure most people were kind of just like, Oh, Reza, he's just mad at Jill, but it still, it still means something on the way out to have somebody put it, like pointing all the fingers at, at, you know, at someone else besides Dave on to, to take some heat here. So I'd love to hear if you guys think that, you know, this week ends up being a little bit of a net loss for someone like Jill, where she even says through, uh, before she wins the GOAT, she wasn't sure she really wanted it. And then she says later on that she's like, ah, oh, this ended up being more power than I anticipated. She seems like she kind of likes it, but I think she knew that she was in an okay spot. But yeah. she kind of, you know, she kind of went for it to protect Dave on. And I, I wonder if you guys feel like this is ultimately going to be a bad thing for Joe. Yeah, I mean, it's very it's much like, Chappelle, right? Like, uh, I didn't need to win head of household, but now I did. And I'm showing my cards as a result. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, it happens. I, I think that y y she can't lose the numbers, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, yeah, she probably didn't need to lose that, win that challenge. But also, one of the women going home would be bad. They just got the lead. The guys screw up, like, in a way that you just can't fumble it, right? Like, that you were handed a gift. What do you look like allowing your number one ally to then go out? You know, you have to stick by her in this moment. Um, And then, you know, even just, like, aside from the social standing of, you know, maybe Jill having a target on her back now, we don't know how the game ends. It could be a jury vote. And maybe yeah. she just lost Reza's vote. You know, we don't know. Yeah. And so, yeah, the way you get rid of these people on the show could come back to bite you. And Reza goes out, uh, you know, in a blaze of glory. But he goes out blaming Jill. So maybe at the very end, he's not looking at Jill like his sister anymore. And he's starting to look at Jill as the person who betrayed him. And maybe you know, in a situation where it comes up to, you know, Jill versus Davon, he might lean toward Davon. So, um, yeah, be interested to see how this actually plays out. Now listen, I I don't want to I don't want to cross streams too much and perhaps speculate about other reality shows, but if Davon were possibly in the mix for an upcoming season of the challenge, uh, mm -hmm. I wouldn't prognosticate ahead to how that bears on this season. But to your point, Jenny, I do wonder if like she took a lengthy yachtist from reality TV. She's been on the challenge podcast, but hasn't been a participant really in anything since 2020 when she was on Big Brother 22. Could it be that like her legitimate enjoyment and playing with somebody like Jill and being in power really for a long time for the first time in her reality TV career made her be like, yeah, you know what? I can approach some of these things again. A lot of stuff I said no to. I'm going to start turning those into yeses. Yeah. Did this light a fire? You know, are we getting a, a renaissance here of uh, Dave on 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 reality TV again? Like th that would be great. I think that would be very fun. Uh, it makes me wonder, you know, how how does this go for her? her? Because I would say if we want to talk edit and then we can get into like the or the order of, of uh, operations here. But I feel like I thought there would be no numbers. I thought we figured this out. I Mike, I I'm not a numbers. What lady, what are what is the order of operations? Do you know? Um, no. Uh, please order of operations. Please excuse me, dear Aunt Sally. But yeah. it, oh, in, in Canada we knew it as bed miss. Oh, go bed ahead. Miss. Bra brackets. Excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Yeah, yeah. I think that's yeah. I think that's. But why? What, what does that mean? <laughs> brackets. Excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Yeah. Um. Okay. So it's brackets. Oh, guys. I, oh, here's the thing. <laughs> You can't expo expose me like this. The last no. time I did any sort of math was in grade 10 or 11. What? Um, How'd you graduate high school? We I didn't have to take it past grade 11. Um, it, we had the option in like grade 12, you do like algebra or calculus or and something. you said neither. <laughs> and I just said, none for me. Thank you. How about drama? <laughs> uh, and here's the thing. I started off being actually good at math. And you want to know what ruined math for me? What's that? Goodwill Boy. hunting. Boys. Boys <laughs> ruined math for me. Oh, cause because they're of their of their hot, luscious bodies took you away from their studies. Well, because kind of in in my last year that I took math, I was seated next to a guy that I had an on again, off again romance for a couple Ooh. of years of high school. And 
everyone knows with math it's very important that you you have to learn the 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 building blocks to the next thing you're going to learn order you of operations step, literally <laughs> exactly. order of operations i fucked up oh. my own over order of operations so you did you bed mass dick. him <laughs> <laughs> honestly surprisingly no um oh. <laughs> you, said, you said to him bed moss <laughs> bed moss I was really saying no moss. Um, yeah. but, but anyway, listen, I went, I was, I went to a nice Catholic school. <laughs> I am, I was literally the worst. Um, but I'm telling you, I, I could have been good at math, but I ruined it all. So anyway, don't ask me for the definition of, of bed mass or ped mass. I just know that that's what it is. Um, but to the point I was once going to make. <laughs> I hope I like everyone enjoyed just, I interrupted your own podcast that. to say, do math now. <laughs> <laughs> You're a menace. <laughs> Mike yeah. Bloom is putting the men in menace here on yeah. this podcast. Not all menace. Not right all after menace. I had to share the, the painful fact that men ruined my ability. <laughs> I could have been a mathematician. I could have been freaking Bronte. And, and Bronte. No. All right, no. well. That's the direction that you wanted to go in. I think we call that a uh, a lucky a lucky break. <laughs> I could have been in my Bronte era. Um, <laughs> I think they call it the Cretaceous period. So stupid. My God, what what's wrong what with you? <laughs> Brontosaurus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wanted, that's why I screamed because it hit me like two <laughs> seconds too late. I was like, yeah. wait, not Bronte Soros. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's where you find the definition of all those math uh, those math uh, terms in the Bronte See, I'm the exact like opposite of you, Jenny. I have all this <laughs> stupid stuff from grades 1 through 12 crammed in my head, and they're like, well, you're not going to have anything else to do with this. You might as well pull out these Brain Quest references when you talk reality <laughs> TV with Norman. Yeah. Yeah. Someday this will be helpful on a stupid podcast about the ghost. Yeah, someone's going to slumdog millionaire this. They're going to be like, oh my God, Bronte Soros, bed mass. <laughs> it's when Jetty couldn't bed Moss. Of course, I remember it now. <laughs> all coming yeah, together. This, yeah. I, you know, I'm very dedicated uh, to this podcast being educational for all. So I'm glad that, you know, our commitment here is is staying true and that, Mike, you are also c committed to that mission here. Uh, it's very important to me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I feel like when it comes to the edit here, the, the front runners are Wendell and, and Davon are two like gamers you know, the two people that come from competition reality shows that we've got left here. But I have also been saying that, and we're getting more of it as, as things trickle down, we're getting Joe content. We get a lot of like Joe talking about the game and like his strategy and like politicking. And so I, I feel like still don't sleep on Joe. Um, mm -hmm. And then now I would say we should also have have Jill in that conversation. But unless I'm kind of missing something, I feel like that's like the four front runners to actually win this. And I'm not sure that I'm seeing it for the other ones here. Yeah, it's tough because I feel like CJ has gotten a lot of confessional time, and I. But she's uh, fun. I think I, I adore CJ. She is yeah. far and away the surprise of the show for me. Uh, despite did what you the watch label FBoy Island. Yeah, despite what the labels may indicate. No, I did not. I did talk <laughs> with the showrunner of FBoy Island. Actually, uh, oh. uh, interestingly enough, he's a very nice guy. I think actually he worked on this show, or he got somebody. I think he got Joey Sasso involved on the show, oh. but. Um, I, I so I knew nothing about her. She is so effing funny. I think she yeah. is so dry. She's the one right in episode three that's like, I should not be this emotionally distraught over a show called The Goat. But I think part of the problem is that that hasn't really translated to strategy. Like she made the big flip during the the Lauren vote, and I thought like, oh okay, this is when she comes alive. And honestly, her complaint this episode about how like all the fun people are gone, nobody's everyone derails a pool party to go talk strategy is valid. But it doesn't necessarily lead to a lot of, to your point, Jenny, like meaningful game content when she's just complaining the entire time about how she doesn't want a game right now. Yeah, yeah. and then it makes me think that maybe that move uh, of flipping was more, you know, she's a socially motivated player in that she worked with those people because 
she liked them. It wasn't so much like, oh, I'm looking at my or like myself in the pecking order. It was like she got to know Justin and they have this beautiful heart to heart. And she's like, well, these are my people. Like, and that's that. So I think that she's she gives com like really good confessionals. I find her even more entertaining on this show than she was on FBoy Island. Like, mm. she was good on FBoy Island, but I think she's shining even more here. Um, but it's very much a like social, fun loving, like here for the vibes kind of thing. And that's what leads me to be so confused with this show because it's like, what are we doing here? What is this? Is, is this a strategy game? Is this like, is this vibes? Is this fun? Like, it's so confusing about what I should be investing in because, again, like every show I seem to cover on Hit or Quit, I you said it, Chappelle. We don't know how this ends. Is there a vote? No. What are we like? What are what's the end game here? What's the goal here? <laughs> but see, and that's the thing. I've been looking at CJ's game a little bit differently. Uh, I think hmm. that if CJ gets to the end, CJ's not going to have a lot of enemies. Yeah, she made a flip yeah. on her girls a long time ago, but it was a long time ago. You know, a lot has happened since then. Um, Jill and Davon have done some you know, pretty snake-like moves um, that, well, at least Davon has to where that put a, a, like the radar on her. Then we saw Reza going out very angry at Jill. If CJ makes it to the end and she's sitting next to Jill or something like that, she probably got Reza's vote, to say the least. Also, after her flip, you got to really pay attention, and it's hard to do this because the show is mostly vibes. They don't show us the votes. But um, uh, in this episode, Reza got three votes for elimination, and I believe mm -hmm. they were... Uh, well, I'm sorry. Back? I'm sorry, Joe got three votes for elimination. Yeah, and yeah. I believe they were from Reza, uh, Chef Wendell. Jason, and Wendell. Right. Yeah. CJ yeah. has identified that I need to start to, uh, voting with the women again because well, I don't want to put a point. target on my back. Or she just really vibes with Joe and didn't want to vote him off. Uh, so that could yeah. be yeah. the case as well. Yeah. But I agree with you, Chappelle. I mean, listen, we have certainly seen cases in reality television where it's less so about like the game you played and more so, hey, you're the person I feel best about winning, even if you are the least bad of two options. So if she can get to the end, I mean, the problem is, is that like if she has kind of made her bet quite literally with that room, that room is winnowing. So she might be like the last left Empty. standing after <laughs> Wendell goes, but that's not going to give her a lot more clearance unless she can rally everyone else to break up Jill and, uh, and, and Dave on. But that also seems like, as we're talking about, something she wouldn't necessarily do just as a person. Mm -hmm. I mean, what is, didn't she say at the end of the game, like, oh, I'd rather go out a loser than win and do not nice things to people? Yeah. Here's but the again, thing. That spoke to my soul, though. Like, yeah. I, I, like... I love a little game. I love I love the strategy. I want to be in on things, but there's also that little baby bitch in me that I can relate to a game like that where you are you are calling your shot and targeting people. And if you're in a position like CJ where she technically crossed the women and they all seem to be good with her again like they're not including her in their alliance anymore but they all seem to genuinely like her she has a strong social game and she knows that she's probably got good relationships with these people and maybe they never they didn't really do anything to her personally um that's hard to play a game where you have to you know target people when they're like ah they've been nice to me and that feels that feels bad that's kind of what you're what you're also going to get from some of these people that don't have a reality TV background, but not a competition, not a strategic, uh, you know, reality show. So I felt like in that moment where she said, I'd rather lose than, than um, you know, be mean to people that are nice. I completely, I don't care about winning anything that much for me to like make it a bad time. Um, and it also speaks to her standing in the game because I think she knows that she doesn't need to win mm. um, because, yeah, I guess, you know, in certain uh, like on a certain team, if there's three people that are up for elimination, depending on who she's with, maybe it gets a little dicey. But I think she knows and she says she actually um, and I'm, I'm as I'm rambling here i'm talking myself into seeing her game yes, more come to the light I, Ooh, totally yeah. at. I, did, and it's, I, I wasn't, I was, it wasn't yeah. to disparage her in the first place it was more so just like i wasn't sure if i saw like winner edit type for her mm -hmm. but um she acknowledges at one point in the episode being like 
it would be illogical for the women to target me right now. Like Mm -hmm. she's outlining the fact that like, it doesn't make sense for the guys to go after me because I've worked with them and it doesn't make sense for Jill and Davon and, and pal to go after me for this reason. So she, even though she seems like averse to the strategic side of it, she understands where she stands in the structure, which I think is like such an underrated superpower of a social player, just Mm. knowing people's perception of you and how they view you and where you stand in the structure is more powerful than being in power yourself sometimes. And I love that for CJ where she's like, I don't want to do mean things to win a challenge. I don't need to win anyway, because What's at stake for me here? Nothing. Mm-hmm. I'm probably mm-hmm. good. And she's right. So I have to hand it to her. Like that, that, that's a great spot to be. I just don't know again, because we don't know what this, this show and this game is supposed to be, whether if, if we're saying it's like a jury vote type situation, I think then, yeah, if enough of these people piss each other off, um, depending on how the war between, uh, Wendell and Davon shakes out, like we mm. could have some more hurt feelings coming up. I think you're in a good spot if you're CJ, but we don't know how this ends. We don't know what this is about. Uh, we can we can assume maybe some sort of vote, but we don't know. Um, and, and and no disrespect to Jason or Paola, but I don't necessarily see a, a win condition uh, for them just based on edit. But again, yeah. anything can happen. We don't know what we're doing here. No, I mean, I, I think, yeah, Jason would really have to like show he's been playing anything. Like he had an impressive rally in the first episode said the right thing at the right time. But I feel like otherwise we really don't know where he is. The only thing I really can remark about in the kitchen, he's in the kitchen. (laughs) Jason, Jason talks like corn. Does that make sense? The band? No. No. Jonathan Davis? No. Okay. If if, if, if there was, if there was like a stalk of corn that had a voice, I feel like the voice would talk like Jason. You like know? a cartoon See, I, Yeah. Yeah, like, oh, I had a how y'all doing today? All right, well, look at that pig on the farm. I, th- I, I had a thought watching this episode, and it might have been a, a point where I sped up. Um, I thought he was giving Boomhauer. King of the Hill. Mm. Oh, little, I, I think he gives more Mr. Southern... Southern... Dang on, dang on, dang on. I think he gives more Mr. Garrison than Boomhauer. Oh, about, okay. Like, Southern cartoon characters. Yes. Okay. Yeah. There's a it... point where he's like describing the biscuit strategy, and that he was like, and you put those biscuits together, and you bring them up, and then I was like, it was you know, giving Boomhauer to me. Dang on gravy. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> he's, he's a character. He's a character, and I yeah, and I'd probably argue that he's probably playing the game the least. Uh, because, uh, yeah, it looks like he's just going to get picked off right after they finish with Wendell and Reza. He'd be next in line. Um, but, uh, you know, I probably I, I think I'm higher on Paula than uh, than him right now, because Paula, if she gets to the end, what kind of story beats? I've been up for elimination every round, literally oh, every round. Every team that I've ever been on has lost. And I sat Gosh, up here and I out. beat you all. You know what I'm saying? And and he called his shot. He said, whatever team with Paula's on is going to lose. And he was correct. She still was up for elimination again. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I think I'm taking her over uh, over uh, Chef. Uh, but I'm thinking, yeah, if I had to order them, yeah. Like Paula, then him. But again, CJ's probably kick, kicking it right above them. You you pick, you make it to the end without pissing people off? I don't think that's a bad strategy. I also wonder if instead of a jury vote, if it comes down to like a final competition and you know it, you're taking Paula to the end, right? Not to say that she is the dead weight in every one of <laughs> these challenges, but she has <laughs> lost yeah, every single cursed. challenge this season. Yeah, yeah. It's a curse. Uh, it's a curse. Yeah. She's going. Yeah. Um... And god damn it, they keep giving these freaking word challenges and poor Paula is unscrambling words that aren't in her first language. Yeah. Spelling bees uh, as well. Yeah, they're screwing yeah, well, her over well, left and right. This feels like an additional Love, layer, it though. Me. Because it's like, <laughs> oh, not only do you have to remember how these words are in English, but then also, but it also turns into a spelling contest as well, right? We're like, mm. you can write the word, but if it's spelled wrong, you're still out. Uh, and so yeah. that was the problem that poor Paula had. I mean, this you say Big Brother, this is straight out of the Power of Veto competition from Big Brother All-Stars, that Mike Boogie one. I remember where they had to wear, like, they got no sleep, and sometimes they mm-hmm. had to wear drunk goggles and put their feet in the worms, and they had to under unscramble these random words. So I'll give them kudos for being able to do it, and also CJ for doing, like, a takeoff on anal lice with A-Alliance. 
Mm-hmm. I I was gonna say we got the the first thing that popped into my head when I see the first word here, anal lice. We got we got anal. I'm so sad that no one because people were throwing in this first round. We had <laughs> Wendell at least acknowledge that he didn't want to win that first round. So uh, to because you show your hand. Yep. It's a lot easier to to pop someone's balloon once they've struck at you first. And and if he was going to get it wrong, come on, Wendell, you've watched at least a little bit of Big Brother. Could you not have hit us with the anal lice just, just like no. for for the fans? <laughs> I, I, I push, not to call Wendell a liar, but I'm about to push back against his strategy here. Ooh. If you get the first Ooh. question wrong and all the girls get the question right, Wendell, yeah. you're out. That That's you thing. don't get a chance to play the game, Wendell. Come on, uh, Wendell. Like, it's like, what are you doing? They underestimate yeah. that they would get it right. Did he? But they did. Like- and honestly, they did. They could have taken him out. That's the thing. Yeah. Wendell could have been out the, but by the second round. But they they kind of like, oh, okay, we'll go after Reza first. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know yeah. if he had that insight going in, but it very well could have been him because Joe does vote for him and. I, I don't know if it's because Wendell and Davon know each other and maybe they have like a certain level of respect for him, but they keep Wendell around when he could have been eliminated a long time ago. He made it further in the game than he should have. Mm. And I'm not quite sure why. Maybe it's his social game. Maybe he's worked out some type of deal. Maybe because he wasn't striking first, but immediately after Reza goes, he could have been next. And they just kind of let him make it. There's also a, a, chan- uh, a chance for him to take uh, another hit on Davon. And she's like, Wendell, I love you. He's like, okay, well, I guess I'll go okay, after Joe. Joe. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Joe, like, yeah, no, it's Joe. Yeah. Like, Wendell, these people are trying to take you out. Stop playing games, you know. So I don't know. I, I I heard what he said, but I think you don't have enough chances to strike back. Reza barely got a chance to play. I mean, you should it's, just it's, go for it. Yeah. Well, yeah. and it also it also depends on the position you're in as well, because I don't know if they went from like left to right, but depending on where you are in the line, you know, like okay, if I'm going later on, then I could still get this question right because chances are. At least a couple people got this right, and then they're probably going to pick me. Chappelle, you bring up a really good point about the odd circling relationship that Wendell and Davon have. I mean, is yes. Wendell approaching Davon not unlike the way he approached this challenge of like, mm. listen, I'm not throwing it, but I'm waiting to take a direct hit before I start attacking. Maybe the reason why he and Davon were able to kind of lie in wait and the reason why he's called peanut butter is because he's like, listen, I took out Lauren. I didn't take you out. You know, Mm -hmm. I'm sorry that I kept Justin, but we talked about this. Justin was important to me. I wanted to go for Lauren. Uh, I swear I didn't know she was with you, et cetera, et cetera, where maybe he just doesn't want to pull that trigger because he knows the minute that he attempts to, then that's really going to turn the fire on to him. Yeah. I mean, we kind of talked about this when I was I was wondering, I was like, is Wendell on to how Davon is on to him? And I know Chappelle, you were saying he definitely he definitely knows like they're not they're not effing with each other. But I feel like they're kind of like frenemies at this point in the mm-hmm. in the game. And like they both don't trust each other, um, but they're kind of they they still have a, a like a weird working relationship where it's like. They know that they're on opposite ends here, but they're hoping that if they can maintain some sort of relationship, they aren't going to be each other's first target and that they'll they'll still continue to go after other pieces that they both hold. And it's this like Cold War situation of like waiting to see, you know, what what's happening. Like and, and we but I but here's the thing is I think that Davon holds the power here in that mm-hmm. even Davon has been over Wendell the minute he even got close to crossing her. Mm-hmm. And the way that Wendell speaks on Davon in this episode tells me that he's just kind of getting to the point where he's like, yeah, I don't know if I can really trust her. But he also is in a situation where he feels like He's losing all of his numbers. So the best thing he can do really is nice. just try to try yep. play nice with Dave Put on and down. hope. Yeah. And hope that that maybe just keeps you in place because you can't strike at her now. You've got no one to help you. Yeah. You don't have the numbers anymore. He says, um, like, I don't know why everybody's afraid to go after Dave on. Like, you're afraid to go after Dave on. Like, what do you mean? You literally <laughs> yeah. had several shots at her and you went after Joe. 
you're terrified of her. She got you shaking in your boots, Wendell. What you mean? <laughs> so yeah, it does sound like he's identified who the big bad wolf is and he doesn't want to cross her because it, this could have easily been him and it ended up being mm-hmm. Reza. You know, like the way the teams broke down, obviously Wendell got, you know, got lucky. But at the same time, Jill and Davon strategized for a long time about who to leave as targets on both of those teams. And had uh, Davon's team lost, it probably would have been Wendell going home here. So, yeah. You know. I mean, what's interesting is that is Wendell now not seeing the other side of the coin of Ghost Island, where now there is this kind of impenetrable pair that was in power, then you can try to strike at them. But much like Wendell and Dom, the minute you find out mm-hmm. that they're being targeted, they're going to turn around back at you, use their numbers around them and get rid of you all of a sudden. So now Wendell is the Desiree, the Kellen, the Donathan, the shoes on the other foot. He's here. such a Kellen. Mm-hmm, 100%. <laughs> I think, I think, you know, it, and it's and it's really interesting to to watch Wendell play what has become an underdog game after seeing him, you know, dominate so heavily in, in his run on Ghost Island. Um, I, I think Wendell at this point in time just ha- did not understand the true impact of a woman scorned and i just think that he he will learn uh very promptly in subsequent years (laughs) exactly and i can't believe that you know he it was happening with dave on first in that you know he i don't think he realized how he messed up with her and uh the face that she's put on to kind of just keep things afloat with him um but the anger and resentment and like the revenge she's looking to take when when the opportunity strikes um i just i don't get the sense that he fully calculated this um this from her and he's only just starting to come around to be like we we talk like we're kind of working together but i he says she's from big brother and you can't trust those mofos it's not even about Uh, her it's about big brother (laughs) well that's i mean this comes from the challenge world and Wendell, ironically enough is not from but that was a big thing from the challenge it's like you can't trust big brother devin has does the whole big brother sucks vip lounge that apparently Mm -hmm. there's this sort of I don't know, connotation of like, well, Big Brother players are sneaky because they're always lying to each other. That's the show that they come from. And so that we can't trust them. It's a little odd to see shots been thrown across like the CBS reality TV bow. Like, I don't know between Survivor and Big Brother what is noted for having more lying. I think it's a negligible difference. Yeah, no, I think it definitely it's probably Big Brother because you know Big Brother there's so there's so much more time right there's so much more time and these people they have to win your vote after living with you for almost a hundred days and so it's like yeah do you know how much this person has lied to you and then there's three challenges a week for these people essentially sometimes where they like yeah I promise I'm not gonna put you on the block yeah I promise I'm gonna take you off the block yeah mm. I promise I'm not gonna vote you out and then they still vote you out you know so two I meetings think, to lie about yeah <laughs> they, they get so many lies going in one week that I think it's probably true. I think the Big Brother players, they're just, they're, they're, they have to be better at really sitting in those moments of silence and saying, okay, I'm pretending to be nice, but I'm going to kill you. Whereas like Survivor players are like, dear God, let me just win this challenge or let me get an yeah. idol. You or, know? <laughs> they, I agree that yeah, it, it's tough to wield individual power. Also Survivor, you have the excuse of like, well, I'm going to go get a papaya. Oh, I'm going to go fishing so I don't have to directly lie to you. There's mm. nowhere to go in the Big Brother house that feels like it needs to divide your attention away from lying to somebody. Mm-hmm. So that's what becomes the prevalent hobby inside the house. Right. Yeah. These people what are evil. <laughs> um, yeah, but I mean, this we're carrying we're carrying this on. And I just I just want to say, I, I Wendell, I feel like you had to have lied a few times out in Survivor. I feel mm-hmm. like I feel like, you know, you did it well. You were nice. But they weren't telling the truth to everyone all, at all times. Yeah. Um. But it, if it's about a, a mount, sure. I statistically, I think you can probably say Big Brother. There's more lying going on. But I think, like we've said here, a lot of it is, is just time and circumstances. Um. And both Plus games it, have really built themselves up to be like you have to deceive a little bit to to succeed in the game for the most yeah, part. Yeah. I mean- I think actually Big Brother players lie the most from the jump when they come in and say, I'm a big fan of Big Brother, as an right. example. That's usually not the truth. 
Yeah, I saw two or seasons anything of about themselves. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and then they they will individual power a lot more than than you do in Survivor, right? You just don't yeah. have the like control to get one person out a lot of times. You have to rally the votes, so it's like it's always a consensus. Whereas Big Brother is more like, no, nah, I wanted you out, and I put yeah. you up. And then, unfortunately, people have to pick between you and the other person I want out, so you went home. And so, uh, yeah, I think yeah. that there's there's a little to, to be said there. But again, Wendell, if you feel that way, why aren't you targeting Davon, right? Because he doesn't have the votes, and I don't think he can whip them that quickly uh, to get her out. She's in a really good spot. Um, so, yeah, she almost wins the GOAT here, but this time, Jill is the winner. Well, and yeah. I think, to me, this is such a coconut shop challenge and maybe mm-hmm. the reason why Wendell oh, yeah. struggled is because he has he didn't play in a coconut chop challenge but <laughs> down to whenever they do these things you know it's very rare that like the person who has the most amount of power always wins because almost mm-hmm. always what will happen is when you're taking out these outsiders they will strike back at usually the person that's the head of the alliance or perceived as such like John Carroll did not win that coconut chop challenge in Marquesas that changes the history Famously. of Survivor yeah. <laughs> so I, I think that it does make sense here that Davon doesn't necessarily win, but someone close to her does. Like that is the shoe in defunct winner of these challenges is someone who is in the majority, but is not the main person in charge. Yeah. And I mean, was there not a situation where, because we talk about Jill and whether it was good for her to win or whether she needed to win. And ultimately she says that like she had to protect Davon from Wendell. So at least she, Jill's recognizing that Wendell is a threat to Davon, even though Mm -hmm. we don't know if he would what he would have uh tried to make happen or if he even had any chance but i feel like there was a situation where paula also could have won if 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 paula could have spelled then we easily could have just gotten paula to win here because didn't we get down to the two of them yeah they it it came down to jill and paula but again jill would have to essentially throw the challenge in order to let paula win and because of Paula's, uh, you know, English being her second language, that might take a while. It might take a yeah, while yeah. for her to get some of these complicated. Yeah, remember, in order to throw the challenge, Jill would have to get one wrong, and more importantly, Paula would Paula have, to get, have one to get one right. <laughs> right, exactly. She could have just yelled the letters, you know. But again, it out. we don't like throwing challenges here on the goat. Very uh, frowned upon over here. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know. We've Tosh is acknowledging that Paula, she's always losing. Couldn't, couldn't, uh, you know, Jill have thrown her. I guess real, really becoming the goat does not even guarantee that you win. You are safe at least. Yeah. You are mm-hmm. safe, but it doesn't even mean that you are going to win because you still have to pick those teams. Um, and so I'd love to also talk through. So, yes, Jill is our goat. I would love to talk through the team selection here because I know we talked a lot last week as well about um how to how to build the teams to get what you want and having you know outs if things don't work out um so i feel like jill did what i was basically saying i that i thought davon should have done um last week with you know what put wendell on your team separate if if Wendell and Reza are your two people that you want to ensure one of them go out the best way to do that is make sure they're on opposite teams and we finally see that that actually happen here with how Jill builds these teams but the problem is she doesn't claim that is that she goes to her grave saying no 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 the teams were fair when Reza is going to understandably speak up in protest, which is probably not something he should mm-hmm. have done when he was hoping to not go. But still, when he points out, and he doesn't know this, but the challenge is a survivor challenge. It's one they've done a few times where you are building a stack in that case of letters to build a word, but it's a test of teamwork. And so this is probably the most survivory challenge we have had so far that Wendell would be the biggest ringer for it. So, yeah, I agree. Like that you're I saying... Think- both challenges were survivory on the week that this is supposed to be house, house uh, reality so shows. Weak. Right. Where this was a Jersey Shore challenge. Why are we doing <laughs> this challenge for the Jersey Shore? It doesn't make the any Jer- sense. The Jersey Shore challenge is just making it home in one piece mm-hmm. after a long not, night. Not getting arrested the on the beach. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm like, a good person. I, I think if this was made 20 years ago, honestly, there would have been 
mannequins of Snooky, and you would have like simulated punching her in the face like that one guy did in like the second episode of Jersey oh Shore. <laughs> right. Or at the very now. Yeah, right. exactly. or at the very least you have to unscramble the note. You know, the first mm-hmm. time oh you when you left Ron made yep. out with two girls and put his head between cocktail waitress breasts. Remember breast. like <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I I've, I've only been reciting that my whole life. You know, in case I ever yeah. got on one of these shows. You don't so remember math. The, the I yeah. I actually did not take twelfth grade math. I instead just spent every period memorizing the letter that Snooky exactly. wrote to Sammy. He was yeah. grinding with multiple fat women. Okay, I'm just saying, like you have to memorize the note because what if one day you're on one of these shows and they harken back to reality TV shows of yesteryear? Why are they doing this for the Jersey Shore? I've prepped my whole life for a challenge about the Jersey Shore, and this is what we get. They yeah, were trying no. to hand this to Wendell. <laughs> I, listen, the, you don't have to convince me because I I don't know bed mass or ped mass, but I know my GTL, which also I heard was meant something differently. Um, oh. But I, 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 I heard the story from Mike's situation, my personal friend, Mike, the situation. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> on, not, uh, please don't associate yourself with that man, Jay. <laughs> no. <laughs> there was some interview where he said that GTL was like code for getting drugs or something like that. What? Um, like yeah. it expanded beyond the original definition. It became like euphemistic like it became or, a, yeah, I, or, he, or he stuck it on the show. That yeah. part isn't clear, but like how excited they would get to like go to the like, the tanning oh, bed. Yeah. Was the weed man was at the tanning bed, yeah, yeah and so and was the other think, people as well. Well, that's right. You, you do you do get baked at the tanning bed, so yeah, oh, yeah. that's true. <laughs> yeah, if only it was just that, it might not be as serious. But anyway, GTL I think ended up being a little bit more nefarious than uh, you know. Remember being so pure and being like these guys, they just love taking care of the bodies and they and love doing the their gym. laundry and like, drugs. <laughs> and like they love coke. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think like what would be some other jer- like could there be something with the duck phone? Maybe that's what I a- was thinking. Yes. You could do like too. a tele maybe a telephone challenge a la claim to fame. Yes, I was just phone. gonna say that. That would have been that would have been so great. Or yeah. like even the claim to fame. You remember the well that challenge with the, the phone cool. where they're trying to Oh yeah. Um, that, find like the, the clues that match up with what yeah, yeah with the i props, feel like you yeah. have so many like jersey shore related props yeah even the first challenge that they did the coconut chop challenge which is these essential these balloons and it's oatmeal and stuff like that it was because in the house you keep secrets i said how do, what does that have to do with what we're doing right now in the house you keep secrets so we scrambled some random words that you can say to now pour oatmeal on your head i was like but it was right there. We had so much to talk real world. We had the yeah. surreal life. And we had Jersey Shore. There's so many big, big brother. There's so many shows that just take place in a house that we really could have played into this a lot more. And I was, I was like, come on, man. Use your imagination a little bit. Yeah. Could you do yeah. something where it's like a relay race, a Jersey Shore relay race where you have to like get up, put on uh, 15 tank tops all one in a row, run into this booth, get a big spray tan, go fist pump for (laughs) 10 times, and then the next person goes. Yeah. Like, there are a million ideas, and uh, hire the three of us, because I feel like, you know, combined... Listen, I've I've already been hired. I'm sorry, I'm the host. I can't get into the challenge for this thing. Yeah. Get Chappelle and I on. uh, We can Mm. be, like, the showrunners or whatever. I don't know. Um, We'll be the, the dream team of the GOAT, because... I think that, the, and I have to criticize the show at times because it's, I feel like there's potential and there's like, if we're going to use this as like a love letter to reality TV, I feel like there's so much lore that you could be creatively like weaving into these challenges. And some of them just feel like a little half baked. And maybe that's the answer is, you know, the gym tan and laundry is happening and we're not quite <laughs> getting to like, we, we, we leave it half there and we're like, that's eh, mm-hmm. good enough. Put on a B costume while you're at it. Um, because like, what would, if we wanted it to have a big brother feel, let's say, if we want to use that as, as like the big top house show, um, to, to base a challenge on, what is the iconic big brother challenge that you use here? Cause like, even O-tev. I feel like, oh yeah, you could, you literally could have done an OTEV. Which I you know, you it would be, maybe you could do, cause they're not going to build a big head. Could you no. do Hassat? 
which is just yeah. Daniel Tosh dressed up like a statue, you know? Right. Or or Daniel Tosh comes dressed up as Zingbot. You know, at least we get the reference. Daniel you know? Tosh is basically Zingbot. Like, exactly. He's roasting the contestants. He is. He, I, honestly, you can't convince me that he's not inside Zingbot. Um, and not like that, that, you freaks. Um, oh. oh, never mind. <laughs> but, I, thought, oh. I thought you meant... No, then, I... Yeah. <laughs> I would love one of those, and I don't know which one it is. <laughs> Hey, what about an Otev, like, based on the goat, um, and you just rearrange the, it's, like, toga, and then it's, like, a goat wearing a toga? Well, no, um, I, sorry. Is I, that still too, like, because, plagiarizing? Listen, well, I think we have to go fully plagiarizing. We're showing clips from these shows. Just call it Gotev. Yeah, Gotev. Right it's, it's right, right there. You got the goat. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I, I just feel like they should have been go Tev. <laughs> I am like and, and I and I think I can speak for all of us. We love us some reality TV. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to reality TV shows, put them in the house, you got my attention. You got my yeah. full attention. That's where I'm showing up. Yep. And so for this to be what we did, it's like, I get it. I like Survivor too, but the challenge, I mean, it, it you know, it was probably the most physically demanding challenge like the one that took the most skill, I'd say, out of all the challenges we've seen so far. I mean, it's not pimple popping. Uh oh. You know, it's not spelling bee. So I thought it was a lot cool. Of balloons. <laughs> yeah, but it just didn't feel like the love letter to reality TV that I would have wanted. No, exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's like we're doing a little too much borrowing of like survivor ish things, or yeah. Now, did you just think not. there was a chance that Joe was going to get teched? Where, <laughs> and this shows maybe yes. again why why the women are kind of running circles around everyone to Joe's point that this guy absolutely bungles it. He says it in confessional, but I have no idea why he thought he would be good at this. Granted, the man doesn't watch a lot of Survivor, but like, we see this back in the days of Chris Doherty, like, taller guys do not do well on balance beams because they have a higher center of gravity. Uh, I may, I don't know if I skipped 12th grade science, but I know that much. And so, yeah, it's no wonder that, hey, the man with big feet and tall body does not do well standing and balancing on the same size balance beam as all these other people. Well, the balance the beam... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, the, the, Davon ruined it for everyone because now every time there's a challenge, somebody thinks that they it. They do it. Somebody do it. I love it. I know they just suck at no, the that's challenge. That's the They're amazing thing to do. It's it's the knowledge is power, right? Like the best <laughs> thing about it is you don't need to throw a challenge ever again because now everyone yeah. assumes that there's a the challenge. Fear of it's, it. like, it's like the um, back door. Like every round is a back door. Like every round is not a challenge. Everyone's throw. fearing but, it. Yeah. But to be fair, every round should be a throw so far. What, you know, like if Wendell, if you really want Wendell to go home, you put him on the other, you put him on your team and you vote him out. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what you do. And same thing with Reza. Now this time they could be a little cute. They put a target on each side. But last week, you cannot convince me that they should not have just thrown the challenge. It should have just thrown it but, and call it a day. I mean, yes, maybe at the point you're at, but I mean, Day got spooked. She threw the challenge and it backfired at a yeah. point where she actually had numbers. Um, mm -hmm. and I mean, she's back in a place with numbers now. Um, I can kind of understand, you know, the fact again that it worked out for them last week is still something uh, I will not understand. And I literally requested at the at, in last week's po podcast, I said. Please give us a post double eviction style edit to explain what the hell happened with this vote. Black and white 15 minutes before the ultimatum or whatever, mm -hmm. um, ultimation or whatever it's called. Ultimation. No, mm -hmm. they had the opportunity. It was Big Brother. It was house, house, uh, reality TV. House week. <laughs> And they yeah. didn't explain shit to us. So that is my other rant about this. But um, like back to the building of the teams and the throwing, what I wanted to say was you're right in that. I, th I think Jill built the teams well for, you know, I, I agree with splitting up Wendell and Reza. Yes. If she wanted to protect from the perception of purposely stacking one team in one favor and not, have them not being fair what was the move should she have actually separated Davon and wendell because I, the Davon is the most winningest person here mm -hmm. and wendell is just good at shit so uh, y'all Davon is the challenge beast and i know and look i'm laughing because we know Davon has a re, like that's not her reputation right one but, win yeah. one win yeah that's not her reputation I'm, at all. Like people legit will go out their way and be like, that's why Davon can't win. She's horrible. She can't win challenges. But here, 
Reza what and now? Joe both point out that the moment they saw Wendell and Davon on the same team, like, oh, the fix Let's is in. It up. What yeah. are we going to do? I was like, wrap it up. Yes, and queen. I think she did it. She came up, y'all. She, I told like, y'all she wasn't bad. Overcoming this perception that has followed her for what, like six years at this point in one fell swoop. Look at her. Yeah. yeah. No, it's and and here's the thing is I think that Jill maybe what she was thinking in terms of like let's make it seem fair, um, you know, and also like even gender split. Maybe she's thinking about that. I mean, I think maybe she's looking at like wendell and joe as the counterparts as like the mm. two youngest mm -hmm. fit like Strong guy. kind of Big guys, guys. Yeah. Um, yeah yeah and so maybe it's just also the same thing well i would say it's the same thing on paper with like reza and and jason right but i think i think i don't know i yeah. i, I and just, also I just think that split dave on and, and wendell up and that's the argument you meant they've they've both won a bunch so i kind of wanted to make it even i don't know yeah, but also Reza only has a problem with this because he's not on that team. You know, he yeah, only right. has a problem with it because he does, he doesn't get yeah. picked by Jill. He's also for him. Uh, he's like, look at Jill stacking the team against me, as opposed to if it was him, Jill, Davon, and Wendell. He's probably like, yeah, this is even this is right, right? Like if you switch him and Jason, I don't he you don't hear a peep from him. That's yeah. literally what he complains about. He says, mm -hmm. why did she? What does she have something with Jason? Because she has something with me. And she didn't pick me. And it goes back to mm -hmm. then this sort of like impasse that they were at where I think Jill probably thought that the Bravo blood was drawn when obviously Reza does not vote with her and Kristen votes out Lauren. But, uh, you know, I think according to Reza, he had felt since the very beginning, like, yeah, we didn't talk that much because as he put it to me, and I did have the chance to talk with Reza, which I can certainly share because Good Lord was the man shot out of a cannon about Jill, especially that he had felt like he it wasn't that you were pulling away from me. I was pulling away from you because your presence was so toxic in the house. I did not want to associate with you. So that's why our alliance fell apart. Oh, my mm -hmm. goodness. Like, uh, here's here's the thing. You if you have a relationship with someone, you have to still maintain said relationship. There are only so many people in the house like you need to be checking in. You can't just like be like, OK, well, that person um, I have a I have a relationship with them, so they're they're not going to cross me. But then do literally nothing to signal to that person that they are important to you um, and you know, beyond the Reza voting out Lauren uh, of it all as potentially being a point where, uh, you know, the Bravo Alliance seemed dead. I think what really stuck out for Jill personally and where we see her really start turning on Reza, she references it. They uh, gets referenced at the end of this episode when Kristen gets voted out mm -hmm. and how angry Reza seemed to be about and and you know like the stomping on her grave of it all like that Jill mentioned it at the end of that episode when Kristen went home and you can tell it's still sitting with her she so she was off on him I, definitely by that point because she saw she saw behavior in him that she was like I don't like that like whether you know whether we were supposed to work together or not like the way that you talked about her after she left and took pleasure in her when she was already gone that didn't sit right with me and i think that it was hard for her to turn back around on that and he really didn't put in any effort with her yeah yeah I, yeah he's well, tap dancing on Kristen's grave but also reses at the same time right mike because it's like yeah yeah i mean on hers at the same time because Kristen goes home they make fun of Kristen, but it's at jill's expense so yeah yeah, I was, the, the way he vocalized it to me was that I think it came from her response to the Lauren boot, where I think he did take some offense at like her responding, you know, oh, I guess we can't trust you guys anymore and being so right. betrayed, where he basically said, uh, the irony is she and I are so similar that her reactions were activating me. Yes, did something transpire that you didn't appreciate? Totally. But does your behavior need to spill onto everyone else? I was feeling some sort of way when Justin got exiled, but I wasn't like, what's going on? I wasn't having that kind of reaction to the point where it was affecting how you're cohabitating with people. Create an environment where everyone can build their energy back up. We're going to have to start filming in the morning. Maybe don't have these huge emotional outbursts. And then he does say, ironically enough, I also had a huge emotional outburst on my way out. But that was interesting to me that I think it was yeah. less so about him like reacting in that moment of him being like, how dare she take this pot shot on the way out and more so a lead up of him being like, 
don't bring down the mood by responding adversely to your ally getting blindsided, which is a ridiculous thing it's to wild. say on paper. It's wild. Yeah. It's wild. Because you, you took the first shot. So had it been the other way around and you had an emotional reaction, you know, it would be, you would think, okay, that is something that I could see. You, you got your feelings hurt. We lied to you. You feel betrayed and you reacted to it. But since you took the first shot, she was the one who brought the energy down. Had it been the other way around, yeah, Reza, I think it would have been you. You've had several weeks to kind of get in the mode of, okay, Justin went home. And obviously, you probably don't take that as hard because no one could, no one betrayed you when Justin went home. You didn't vote him out. Y'all literally had the chance to, I mean, y'all y'all literally voted him out. Y'all had the chance to vote out Joe and did not, you did not vote out the other people. Your numbers. Right. You voted so he, Paula. So you should not even feel <laughs> betrayed that Justin went home. You know what I'm saying? Whereas Jill was completely lied to. You know, I don't think they led you to believe Justin was saying, staying from, from what it could, like what we could tell, y'all just took your foot off the gas. So it's a very different feeling, but I do get what he's saying. Like the moment Jill says, all right, I ain't love that. And now we can't sleep in the same room. You know, like the house literally divides in half at that point. And it does probably take the wind out of your sails a little bit. You say, okay, well, this person doesn't want to play with me. So I'm not going to talk to them again. And then later on in the game, you have no choice but to go back to that person kind of on bended knee, hoping they'll take you back. I, I would love to talk about how Reza, you know, goes into the girl lions layer oh, of yes. hair and makeup. Yes. yes. I love that the fourth wall has been smashed to smithereens. Yes. And I love that if we're talking about who's throwing the first punch, Pella and Jill threw it first last episode when they're like, excuse me, uh, stop right? talking to the camera right now and please talk to us, which is just wild. Imagine if someone was giving, was in the diary room on Big Brother and someone just walks in and is like, um, excuse me, can I bother you for a second? We have some game get, chat. <laughs> yeah, please don't get rid of me right now. Uh, what are you doing? Don't blindside me at this moment. Are you going to use the veto? Are you going to use the veto on me? Please tell me you're going to. It would be great television. absolutely wild. I'm stunned that, and maybe the production's so jank that they just didn't choose to lock the door to the confessional room that they didn't think that someone could barge in there. But honestly- Speak your good, mind. Someone might come in, but it's yeah. fine. It's fine. <laughs> but honestly, good next level thinking on Reza's part to be like, all right, well, well if all the entire house is on limits, then yeah, sure. Obviously, it was not well received, but I don't think it necessarily- hurt his case any more than it would have you know wait shenanigans 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 then last week they did the same thing to chef jason he did his confessional yeah. Yeah. yeah so like it's like yeah once you once you break the seal reza can do whatever he wants you know what yeah. i'm saying like that legit hair in, in jason's is, lap no hair they, can, you, is secret no, apparently. they cannot be the girl's lair once you break the concession the confessional <laughs> seal now all bets are off. That's why I was like, shenanigans. They sat in Jason's lap like, Jason, please don't move me out. And for some reason, I think it worked. And so um, I mean, here we are. Yeah, I'm all in the hair and makeup. What are you talking about? Rez, I'm, I'm, out, Rez, I'm moving in until I figure out what this vote is like. Yeah, I love now, it. Now, okay, here's my question. Is the reason, because I, I think that it's Jill that says, what are you doing? This is a no-no. You don't come into the hair and makeup to do this. Yes. Is the, is it different because when you come in to hair and makeup to have a game talk with the camera crew behind you mm, yeah. and you're half made up and you didn't want to be on TV without your lashes or your hair mm. half done, you know what I mean? Like you've, you've, I'm just saying, I think that that's maybe why it's a little bit different than the Ooh. confessional room specifically, where it's like walking mm -hmm. in on you in the bathroom, being like, hey. I was going to say, it feels like a degree removed from the bathroom of like, hey. Yeah, I know with you're, your freaking you, camera crew. Like, I, I know that you're, you know, squeezing out a deuce right now, but I want to go from your number two to my number one. Mm -mm. Oh Listen, <laughs> most Big Brother strategy happens in the bathroom mirror, okay? People yeah. be in there all day doing their hair and makeup, and at some point, you just got to walk like, in and be like, so, what you doing? But that's filmed 24... That They know, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I have to assume that these people... Like, they're literally getting... On Big Brother, they're doing their own hair and makeup in the mirror. This is the where we learn that... They're, you know, they're treating this like a regular, you know, TV set and mm -hmm. they've got a crew doing the hair and makeup before probably the ultimate ultimation each uh, each week or whatever. Um, so 
I just think that like, hey, I didn't agree to be on camera, not made up. That's a different story when I'm on Big Brother and I know I'm being filmed every single corner of every room at all times. Um, so I could see being like, you know, especially someone like Jill that's never never done a show like Davon. Davon's used to this, uh, yeah. but to be like, um, excuse me, I don't have my face on. What are you doing, mm -hmm. bringing your crew in right now to like ambush me? But for Reza, it is kind of a genius move because it's like way to get them cornered. Where the hell are they gonna go? <laughs> yeah, you're trapped. That's yeah, a move. well, that's that's the thing is that maybe another reason why, to your point of like. Hey, this is my private time. Don't look into me. This is that Reza has claimed to me and to other sources that Jill was toxic. Uh, mm. That he says that he was, and Chappelle, this is to your own heart, that he says she was basically acting exactly like she was on Below Deck in Goat Manor. Yes! Quote, you're so lucky they didn't show what a beast you are to production and how entitled you feel. Her attitude was so horrendous in the house. Now it's pulling away from her anyway. She owned Goat Manor and production were her servants. It was awful. I just, mm. here's the thing. I just feel like it's giving a revisionist history when the there were multiple occasions in this episode where Reza is saying, Jill's my homegirl. Jill mm -hmm. got the goat. She's going to keep mm -hmm. me safe. Like, mm -hmm. that's my yeah. girl. Like, why are we getting th those confessionals if you were already soured on her? Like, that's where it's not adding up to me. Um, and I think that people, people, once they've, you know, made their decision about how they feel about someone, that colors their their past perception. They look back on on past interactions differently. So I think that in his mind, he felt that way then. But I just think that the tapes are telling the truth here and that he wasn't quite there yet. You know, he's mm -hmm. he's painting it with the brush of how he feels about it now after the fact. And maybe some of those things were happening. But I just don't think that he saw them that way at the time until he got backstabbed in his eyes from her. And, and that's, right. I just feel like you're not giving confessionals saying like, Jill is my girl. That's my home girl. She's got me. If you've already been sick of this bitch, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I just don't think yeah. that that's what's happening. Cause Reza look is someone that is certainly not one to mince words when it comes to how he feels about a person. Yeah. I would imagine if he felt that way about Jill in that moment, he would have said something in confessional though. I, I guess it also depends on when these are being filmed, right? right. I mean, uh, he is talking about what just happened in the episode, so I imagine it was before his elimination. Because also, even if it was just him being eliminated, he would respond in a very different way unless he's a very good actor. Yeah, he. you can see the moment when Reza cracks. It's after yes. they choose the teams and stuff, and then, like, yes. everything's... Yeah, everything's starting to go downhill from mm -hmm. there. They lose a the challenge. Everything's fine. Reza walks into the room out of nowhere. And he's like, you know who fucking sucks? <laughs> and they're like, what? He's like, yeah, Wendell's Jill's like, a huh? bitch. <laughs> yeah, he's like, and she's like, well, what did she do? He's like, she he, she didn't pick me. He's like, oh, that's it? He's like, yeah, she's a bitch. Did you see what happened? She she put you with Dave Arnold. She, she, she me Jason? Jason? I was like, oh, yeah, he's done. Yeah, so that <laughs> Wendell's like, this is my number one. This is who I want to sit next to if there's a vote. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, too bad Reza will not make it that far. No, does not. Yeah, does not work out. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree, Chappelle, because, um, you know, I, I, I'm trying to place the, the confessionals, but I definitely um, saw, you know, he was a lot more excited after Jill had won the GOAT, but before yeah. the teams were picked. Um, so, but again, that is based, like, you know, his feelings about her are based on her actions towards him for the game at that point, not panning out in the way that he expected they would, and not so much about just who she was as a person. So I just, I still think it's giving very much, like, you feel this way now, mm -hmm. but yeah. you weren't necessarily feeling that way at the time for the reasons you said. So yeah. here's something else that might indicate the way that he's feeling is confessionals is and this is what you know screwed over daniel reyes right is that you don't know yeah. what's being said about you until you watch these episodes and so mm. 
you know, when I ask Reza about why he felt that way about Jill, first off, he tells this really interesting story uh, from the Bravo streets about when Su Shots of Sunset started, there was, you know, right after Jill had gotten fired from Roni, and there was like a scene apparently in a Shots of Sunset episode where he was in a gay bar and he was interacting with somebody. And apparently Jill had gone on social media and talked about how, quote, Bravo was going out hill, downhill since she left and talking about me. Uh, and then apparently Jill like had to eat crow and write Reza an apology letter and get her some get him some chocolate chip cookies as sort of penance of like, sorry, I was homophobic. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> and so then it comes around to Goat Manor and he says, I think me and her are good, but she was doing the same thing the whole time. Uh, you treated production like they were your servants. So when I got to my elimination, I was so full of her double talk hypocrisy and how she used every interview bite to make a disparaging comment about me. You didn't need to be like, oh, Reza's face doesn't exude confidence. I come more fruits and vegetables in that sandwich challenge than she did. Uh, and so he basically says like uh, he, he wanted to call her out at the end because he felt she had been double talking the entire time. But I think also hearing her kind of shit talk him as well probably helped dig that hole a bit of, oh, oh yeah. yeah, she was never as close to you as you may have thought. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it just it validates the things that you're feeling already. And you're like, yeah, see that person? That's they suck. They were they were talking shit the whole time. Yeah, it's like I think his friend his his feelings are just hurt. You know what I'm saying? He yeah. went in and then his friend said some cutting things about him behind his back. And then uh, you know, he saw him and now he's like, dang, that really hurt my feelings. And so now I gotta go out and kind of spin the narrative to make it seem like, well, you weren't really my friend the whole time anyway, you know, and or you weren't that good of a person. I was blinded by an XYZ. I feel like they can bounce back from this. This feels like a betrayal, but not something that would end friendship forever. And it's Bravo. Well, this again. was like a year ago though. <laughs> yeah, but it's Bravo. They they fight, they throw drinks in each other's faces, they go and then they go on trips together at the same yep. time you know so i feel well, like they'll be okay i hope so because as much as i love the little mess on the tv um i, I i'm always a softie at heart and i don't i don't want people in real life to be mean and and hurting each other's feelings and sad as, as, as soft as a chocolate chip cookie that jill gave reza yeah. when she said i apologize <laughs> that basically i said that bravo had gone woke <laughs> sorry <laughs> for doing a homophobia here is a cookie um <laughs> yeah <laughs> You know, the classic apology. Um, I, for yeah. some reason, that reminds me so much. Maybe it's because, like, we're talking the day before Pride. But one of my favorite internet videos is when, I don't know how you've seen this, where it's Pride. And, like, somebody walks up to somebody's car and, like, gives them a cookie cake and balloons, congratulating them for Pride and for being gay. I'm going to have to send the video and send it to you. It <laughs> I've is, never seen it's this. It's so good. It's, it's a, like, the specific taste. Uh, so it's the exact opposite of, okay, now giving a cookie of celebration instead of more so yes. penance. Like, well, maybe Mama, that's why it was... That for spilling. Exactly. Maybe that maybe that was why it was the request. Is that, like, this is, this is what you do to celebrate. You mm. give the cookie. And so you have to, like, reverse it now. Um, I, I love that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you know, it's too bad. I, again, I love the, I love the mess on the show. Um... But I ultimately like leave it on the field is, is I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm a baby yeah. like that. I mean, listen, I just want no, people, it, I don't want I, people to go on to TV, go on TV and then have it ruin their real lives because then that means that it's going to stop people from being messy on TV. See, I mm -hmm. agree. But at the same time, this is a different flavor where these people are consistently on TV, right? That's it true. is their and job. And consistently messy. <laughs> exactly. And so it's their job to be messy. Like the second yeah. they get too clean is the second they're like, mm, there's nothing to really improve about with you. So therefore you have no storyline appeal. We have to get rid of you. So you kind of always have to keep stirring the pot. It is this soup that you kind of have to keep watching every few hours. You can't let it sit. And so I liked it in at least the fact that it kind of livened up a little bit. You know, it had been only a couple of episodes since we had an exit like this. But I do love, as he has mentioned, as we will mention, as they mentioned on the show, the delicious irony of Reza kind of throwing a hissy fit on the way out, cursing out Jill, and perhaps most egregiously, throwing his prop over the balcony like it was a lead bouquet at a wedding. That <laughs> right over the too shoulder. far too far mm. i cannot believe yeah. tosh brought it over to him like 
I thought they would have just burned it on their own or like did a bit where no. they tossed it at the bottom of the pool or something. I cannot listen, believe they actually listen. No, you you signed a contract. You gonna we gonna melt this thing down, throw it in the fire yeah, pit, and, why is, and leave. why is that the pop of circumstance? Also, do they all run away when they're done? Reza, I saw <laughs> broke into a distinct Sprint. gate. Yeah, yeah he was sprinting <laughs> away like how Eric Reichenbach like full out <laughs> dashed away from tribal council after he gave up the necklace. <laughs> <laughs> that's understandable um <laughs> i just i just think they must be like get the hell out of here now the car's leaving in two minutes yeah no do you shit. think there's like a driver like come on you gotta you gotta yeah. hurry we have so much why do we have so many bits after elimination like we had taisha talking about the car they got i think joey also ran away perhaps out of embarrassment i don't know why i think there someone didn't even have a car i swear like because that's the other thing is it seems like inconsistent i swear one of the people was they were just walking down the driveway and i was like they didn't even get them a car who was it maybe, maybe it might it have been Tekken, someone maybe, last week maybe yeah, i was tech justin maybe they didn't actually they accidentally didn't double book realizing that there'd be a double well, boot they only picked up one well, tech person. left early tech left yeah, before they, they even finished the elimination he just yeah he just took off he I was didn't like, even oh, let him see who was coming with him yeah <laughs> They're like, okay, just get out of get out of here. You you will be joined in literally two minutes, but get out of our site right now. Yeah. I, that you is know. perhaps the goat in a nutshell is like, well, we don't have like a limo to pull up and take you away. So can you just run down the driveway around the corner and out of frame? And we'll say that that was your exit from Goat Manor. This is I mean this, yeah. this show is perfect. It's really like <laughs> surreal life fame games of just mm -hmm. jankiness, right? Yeah, uh, oh man. It including I think I think this is becoming my thing now. Like, okay, so I was complaining because I didn't know the vote count and all that kind of stuff. Like you get the vote count, but you don't know who voted mm -hmm. for who. But Daniel Tosh is doing this from memory because he's reading off of a stick figure every time. So he's just like, yeah, one vote for Reza, one vote for Te like he, he doesn't actually know who voted for who because he's no. reading off a stick, he's guessing. Because he put the freaking votes, took them straight out of the goat's ass and put them in his mouth. He went As ass to did. mouth. Mm -hmm. All he saw was the count and went straight ass to mouth, which you don't do, Mike. You do not do. No, we got it. Listen, if you connect the digestive tract, it's no. much a more efficient experience. I saw that in a movie once. Ah. There's got to be there's got to be a bed mass or ped mass for this. Like the order of operations here is very important. <laughs> it's killing me that the that, but that the division is before the multiplication and bed mass. It's supposed to be bevdis. <laughs> it's driving me crazy. <laughs> Canadians, what's wrong with y'all? How well, do we end up back here in full circle? Yeah. And <laughs> hey, does bed mass have like a U in the middle of it? Uh, yes, of course. Every we have used to everything. What's the mass in French? Because I do believe it has to be written in both languages by law. <laughs> Listen, you know, Americans, it, they're putting the I in team. They're, you know, it's very, we're putting you in everything. We want to, it's the opposite, all right? We put the you in bed, miss. <laughs> and every other word. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, the exits have been really, really fun. But uh, of uh, of course, Tosh is he is committed to the bit yeah. in every way. Um, and so I did love, again, sort of a fourth wall ish breaking moment of him while Reza is still giving a confessional about f you jill uh coming up uh mr reza he actually does <laughs> he this. this which i don't think <laughs> right. i've seen like i saw it euphemistically in fred i thought but i don't i thought he still had the finger up when he did it he yeah, did he both i think he, he double booked it yeah this. yeah like, yeah i've never seen anyone do this in yeah god at least like 20 years maybe <laughs> He's a man of a certain age, you know. He's got the old, the OG disses on 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 yeah. deck. You yeah, know? like he was. Um, a, I feel like he's a couple minutes away from doing like the suck it gesture. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, I hope that someone we need to bring back <laughs> like the big suck it though, not like yeah, a little like the D little, generation little, X. Like, yeah. <laughs> jump like, up and down, X pop, <laughs> suck it. Yeah, yeah, suck it. We need. We need more <laughs> wrestling energy um, on yeah. more reality shows. Well, we uh, got I mean, Reza did... call Steve Austin with the like. <laughs> yeah, and Re and Reza did do the goat from the top rope. Like maybe he was just trying <laughs> to deliver a pile driver to Jill. Maybe he was yeah. hoping to whack Jill in the head. 
<laughs> Reza might be my new favorite wrestler that quickly. A yeah. wrestler. Yeah, a wrestler. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm really gonna miss him. Um, I I feel like I, you know, Mike, you were talking about the the soup. Uh, you know, the the boiling of the soup. Uh, I felt like we could have let that simmer a little bit. Like I felt like there was something building. Um, I don't know what I hoped would happen here el- elsewhere, but I think um, I hope that losing Reza here hasn't stifled. Uh, the drama because it almost feels like at the end of this episode it's kind of bringing people together in a way um, that everyone's kind of on the same page of like being like you know we see we see uh, Jill and CJ kind of talking about like the hypocrisy mm-hmm. about how Reza handled things given how he talked about Kristen and I still want there to be some unrest and some animosity i want there to be sides i don't want this to just turn into okay we just pick off wendell next Mm -hmm. and you know as much as i am rooting for davon i like her alliance with jill it's been really fun um i i want there to still be factions you know no that's the thing is that we we like when people we like do well in reality tv but that's also counterbalanced with like the general mentality we have which is like we want power shifts we yes. want underdogs to become overdogs etc we want competition uh, exactly every single week and so i i hope it does happen i agree that you know at least if wendell had gone this week then you will have an incredibly angry reza the next yeah. week that will at least make things entertaining i don't know how much wendell is going to like flip over tables both metaphorically and literally i mean look he no. is a he could master the survivor scramble and try to hook people in, but it does seem at this point that it really is, you know, the three women and then Joe, especially with Wendell, has no reason to jump over and vote alongside him. So I got to imagine this these four are going to carry things pretty far, barring any sort of unforeseen circumstances. Well, the preview did lead us to believe that maybe Jill ends up in a situation where there's a 50% chance that she's going home. So maybe they go down yeah. to teams of two for a challenge or mm-hmm. something like that. No, I um, think it spoils. I think I think the yeah. next time on, I think the editing is like a little loosey goosey. And mm. I think that even that even more spoils. than other shows, which actively spoil, but are like, yeah, we don't really care. But yeah, I mean, not so speculation, outright spoilers, skip ahead like a minute if you don't want to hear this. Yes. If Jill says I have a 50% chance of going, it implies, I think, that we're going to have a team of four and a team of mm-hmm. three. Jill is on and, the team of three with the goat. And, and the goat's going to be safe. Yeah. Safe and it's her or and her. they do the three and three with the one person sitting out. Mm, that's true. And mm-hmm. they pick the like champion thing again. Yeah. And yeah. they pick the team of four or they, they pick the team that doesn't have the goat and they mm-hmm. win so the only people that are up for elimination are the two on the team with the goat um yeah. so that might that might happen because i don't know mm-hmm. if they were gonna do a four and a three right mm-hmm. i don't think they would do maybe. a four and a three no yeah maybe not yeah <laughs> and then um it looked like the the challenges might be fear factor-esque i saw a yeah. But That's then they also show. had like name tags that looked like price prices uh right. Oh yeah, and I, and I do think on like the super tease they did talk about like game shows. Oh, and there was a wheel point. that had yeah, like, there the was a wheel oh. and other. So maybe stuff it is it. game shows. Yeah, maybe yeah. it's more like a which kind of doesn't count. I, like, I mean, yeah, I don't think there's that been counts so much explicit TV. talk with reality TV of like, oh, it's a game show versus a competition reality show. Like, there is a literal leg- legality based dividing line between yeah. the two genres. Yeah. It's a little odd that we're actually doing game shows this week. But I but mean, Fear Factor is a reality show, right? Fear Factor is a reality show, whereas yeah, Wheel of Fortune is a game show. Yes, I believe yeah, that's so. how I feel. Yeah, just the line, right? I- I think I think so. I think that is uh, that's yeah. probably the line. Um, I mean, when it comes to things that we will cover on hit or quit, like Rob and I dipped our toes a little bit into the game show. Um, you know, oh, yeah, in, with, in the with cold the, winter, the floor. Uh, the floor. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like it is like it's reality TV adjacent, but mm. it's not it's not what I would think of. Um, when when thinking of you know reality tv shows but 
we're getting a breadth here, uh, you know. And also, th did you guys notice, it looks like we're going to get um, Tosh in, like, and it doesn't make any sense because Tosh just dresses up like things. Uh, I, I like it seemed like a Guy Fieri uh, oh. outfit. Well, right. I, I think we're going did, to Flavor Town. Well, he did infamously host Minute to Win It back in the day. The oh, World Guys cheapest, Grocery Games. Or Guys Grocery Games, of course, Minute to Win It, the world's cheapest game show, which I loved. Mm -hmm. It was like roll an egg with your nose for 30 oh, I don't seconds. Know, I don't know that one. Oh, oh I know Minute to Win It. Yeah. Minute to Win It was <laughs> great. It was like, hey, all right, we've got our you know million dollar lights on this brilliant set. Use a straw to blow three cotton balls to the other side of the table and you win $50,000. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. uh, finally, yeah. a game show for me. <laughs> well, I remember specifically the minute to win it home game was like, felt like mm -hmm. even cheaper of like, I could just get these things from my home. Why would I buy them in a package box that has Guy Fieri's <laughs> face on it? Branding, baby. Okay. Um, <laughs> I yeah. The only the only uh, Guy Fieri uh, game show I was familiar with was Guys gr Guys Grocery Games. I've actually triple watched G. that. Are you triple D or triple G? Uh, well, I like I like them both. Um, <laughs> so you know, if there's three. If there's three of the same letter, and Guy Fieri's <laughs> hosting it. I'm, I'm there, man. baby. Yeah, Jimmy, man. <laughs> Give me D, 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 G, 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 K, K, K. I'm there with Lost Guy. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Guy, please. I was waiting <laughs> for you. <laughs> we were all waiting for you. Jesus. Oh, my God. Um. So, again, I don't know if, if that's... I mean that at least makes a little bit more sense if the if the theme is going to be game shows uh, than the B for um, whatever it was last I week. Just I just hope we bring back the cooking B challenge. Every episode. Cooking, no yeah. wait, the B. No wait, the B wasn't the cooking challenge. It was the picnic but challenge. It That's was, what it was cooking week. Yes, <laughs> like, restaurant wars. <laughs> yeah. Again. There's just a, there is a tickle trunk. There are props and. Uh, Daniel Tosh just wants to catch them all. You know, he's like, <laughs> I need to find an opportunity to wear every single thing in the in the costume costume room. And he's he's dedicated. Honestly, I think he might be my soulmate. Yeah, it sounds like it. I, honestly, <laughs> like, yeah, I was like, this is very incredibly my stupid bits that only sometimes veer on funny. <laughs> he makes really dumb puns and like just talks consistently. And he loves to wear stupid costumes. Like, I can't... This is the quintessential example of if you point at somebody, there's four fingers pointing right back at you. <laughs> I cannot slander this man. No, this I is I myself good. have been committing the same crimes for t a They're decade. Not... Lock you have up, been a criminal baby. for a decade. Yeah. I, am a, I am an outright <laughs> criminal, decades long, on the lam. But there's nobody I'd rather have be my accomplice in this than one Daniel Tosh. He's the best friend that doesn't know he's my best friend yet. I he should know because and this is giving so much context for my appreciation uh, for him because I feel like it all it all makes sense and now I legally require you to host a show because the the absurdity of it all it's it adds such levity. Um, I really think that this show. Well, I'm sure that some people might feel like Tosh kind of distracts or like adds like a weird element to it that's like confusing. I'm like, is this unserious? Is this supposed to be a strategic game or whatever? I I am very grateful for it because it I just think that it's just another show, if not for the silliness yeah. um, and the absurdity that he's bringing to it. And, you know, we've made the comparisons to House of Villains in that, um, you know, kind of similar idea. They are living in a house. They are doing these little challenges. It is hosted by, you know, like a similar type, you know, comedian style host. Mm -hmm. um, but so different. The, mm -hmm. Like the... Like making, you know, he's still doing the Joel McHale thing where he kind of like is roasting them, but he's roasting them in a way where he's also roasting himself. And it's so like silly and goofy that it really, I don't know. It's just a feel good show 
in in the way that he shows up. He's calling Jill Jilly Bean. He's saying oh, that yeah, uh, yeah. You know, Chappelle, are you are you are you shipping the two of them? Considering that, like, uh, <laughs> I kind of love it. He, he seems to really find Jill as his main. I wouldn't even say punching bag. Just sort of like unwilling scene partner in a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Jilly Bean really took me down. I was like, yeah, that's the one. That's yeah. the one. I think you got to keep it light because these people, this is a fun, whimsical game and it's got a whimsical yes. host and it's it's stupid. We're pulling the, the, the votes out of the goat's ass. You know, I think you need... <laughs> putting like, it in the mouth. <laughs> like Joe McHale scoffs at this kind of thing. You know, he comes yeah. in yeah. he's like, well, this is the dumbest thing ever. Yeah. Whereas the there, Tasha's is... like, this is the dumbest thing ever. And, I'm and I love it. it. Well, that's yeah. because I feel like Joel's character, like there's different shades of the same color. Joel's Mc... mm -hmm. Joel McHale's character, even even from community was this above it all approach. Yeah, like, exactly. I can't yeah. believe I'm doing this, but here yeah. we are. Daniel Tosh is like, I can't believe I'm doing this. Oh wait, I can because I'm Daniel Tosh and I yeah, have Daniel no bottom Tosh. to the limit of things that I will do for money. <laughs> exactly. And, and so I think it is a, a it's a delicate nuance between the two, but it really shows in the stuff that they end up doing on these shows. Yeah, because like J Joel McHale is is very much giving like I'm just here to get paid. Like I don't right. want to spend a check. minute longer with you people than I have to. Um, you are the gum underneath my shoe. Um, <laughs> and and this Tosh is like they can't get him out of <laughs> you the make me. <laughs> <laughs> they can't get Tosh out of the confessional room. They're like this isn't about you. And he's like I want it to be. I want I want to live this experience because he loves reality TV and he thinks that this is like really fun and really cool um even though he makes little like comments where he like he was like it was awful i'm like no, stop lying to us you've been loving mm -hmm. every minute of this like this mm -hmm. is his love letter to reality tv you know um and i do mm -hmm. love that he's like really woven throughout the whole show because it would not be the silly unserious product that it has come to be without his presence so um mm -hmm. you won't find me being upset about uh a little bit of uh toshi yeah my, apologies. my DL toshi Chappelle and i did have a moment where we bonded over a mutual quote from the remake film of the little rascals from 1990s yeah. oh i believe film. it's Dear Darla, I, I hate your stinking oh, guts. guts. <laughs> you make me vomit. You're scum between my toes. <laughs> love, love Elf, Elf, Elf Alpha. Alpha. <laughs> yeah, I think I've actually seen this one. As you should have. As it's you should. Honestly, Guys, I've always I... felt close to Mike Bloom, but I don't think I've ever uh, felt close to him. This felt like a different level. Gosh. Move over, Daniel Tosh. I think I found my new love already. Yeah, I was saying, I was this is why they call you a man way. whore, Mike. Frankly, I, I just Mike there's, there's, I have so much to love. I have a big heart. It's a medical yeah. condition. Exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> well, I I would never want to get in between the two of you, but uh, this has been yeah, you're, you're the peanut butter in the sandwich. No, that's Tashi Duncan <laughs> point oh, You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Three tickets to challenge. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Jenny. Tashi, there you go. Look, I told you this was going to be a mess. <laughs> oh, uh, my God. I'm so sorry, everyone. I'm so don't sorry apologize. for what we've done no, here please tonight. Don't apologize. Did Leonardo um, da Vinci apologize for the Mona Lisa? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's bigger than you expect um <laughs> yeah no this this has been uh what what a time i don't even know where we are and, and what we've done um is there anything that we've not touched on here from this episode oh that, my god like probably right um, we yeah. could be here all night <laughs> There's a lot going on in this episode. I'm not even going to yeah. lie to you. It was a lot going on. So, uh, no, I think we covered mostly everything. If not, I mean, the show leaves so much left out that there's no telling. Like, we don't know the strategy that these people are employing at this point. We just know Wendell and them are trying to survive and that the women are, are – we don't know. I guess Davon and Jill are going to the end together. But everybody mm -hmm. else, they're just, like, trying to make it. So, I guess we'll tune in next week to see if anything changes. But it looks like maybe more of the same is coming our way. Yeah, I'm yeah, really intrigued it, if, if we had the chance to ever talk with like showrunners or especially editors of this mm -hmm. show of how much did this show defy your expectations? Because maybe one of the reasons why we're not seeing any like complicated voting confessionals or anything is that they just are not editors that edit those types of shows. They're obviously they didn't know, a, yeah. there are a lot of different types of shows out there represented by this cast. And so, yeah, maybe they're just like. Yeah, I don't know how to cut an elimination. Like, I do docu follows. I did Love and Blind. <laughs> I'm not covering goat eliminations. What's a split vote? What are these people doing? 
And maybe, mm -hmm. you know, it just, yeah, it just turned out differently than they anticipated, um, you know, because it, it even seemed like half of this cast w was not prepared for things to get strategic. Um, mm. And some of them have uh, pivoted and adapted and some of them kind of resisted. And uh, so th that very much could be the thing. And and if we get the GOAT, uh, you know, season two, I don't know. Which we, if... we did get the QR code for on the screen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, it, well, I love a QR code. Um, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, if we're going to see this again, may, maybe they, they've they learned something, you know, it, you, you have to, it, it's the first rodeo. You got to, you got to get bucked off <laughs> before you can get bucked Did on. It. It. <laughs> it's your Did first it rodeo. You got to get bucked off before you get bucked on. Before Jenny, you that get just buck in here. You did, Jenny, you did that. <laughs> you are not getting bucket here. You shut this down. Shut this down now, Jenny. <laughs> this is why you don't let me drive a podcast. No, <laughs> I love this. You're, you're driving and you're like, oh, a giant peanut. <laughs> yeah, oh, what's that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never let me do this. This is this podcast has been a warning. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a cautionary tale um no this has been really really fun mike what what else have we ha, do we miss anything that you wanted to touch on from this episode or do you want to just get into what else you've got going on because i know i know you're a busy man yes i've been bucking on when it comes to survivor <laughs> coverage here in the off season you think survivor's over no 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 because i've got projects on a weekly and a daily basis uh, i'll start with i guess the more serious one by comparison the daily one is that i'm doing a survivor 50 wish list where every weekday i'm bringing on a member of the rhap community to talk through a season of survivor and determine who could and should be on a list of returnees to be on survivor 50 who knows maybe at some point i'll be talking about a cast member of the goat even uh in a future Ooh. installment but at the time this is being released i believe the first episode should be out with rob but we're going to start proper uh tuesday with australia and then go every weekday from then on out with holidays being the exception the other one which is much more in line with this stuff is the summer of survivor which is an off-season podcast series that's myself rob and shannon gus like we're much like Jenny in 12th grade in that education <laughs> is out the window. Uh, we are a <laughs> not just 12th grade, which is, <laughs> but especially. <laughs> yeah, I would say actually like more so you were like slowly leaving out the window. Like you were, you know, sneaking out of your home at night. 12th grade was when you finally went through to the other side and fell into yeah. the bushes. Mm -hmm. uh, but basically every Wednesday night, we are coming to you live with some sort of weird survivor idea. We branded ourselves the Renap of survivor. And as it shows, our first podcast after our delightfully unhinged kickoff special is going to be a casting of Survivor Mothers versus Moms. It is yes! a cast of beloved moms on Survivor versus Mother. I and can't we, wait. There's a difference. There's a difference. And we have oh. Bryce aboard. So you know it's going to be a, an effing ridiculous time. So check hey. that out live Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern or of course in the podcast feed. And then other stuff to come as well. Some other key announcements actually coming, I think, two weeks from now about maybe some scripted stuff coming back. But otherwise, you can check out everything I'm doing, including at my cameo where I will, a la Daniel Tosh, dress up in a stupid outfit <laughs> just for you for a low, low price because I have no decency at a <laughs> Mike Bloom type. And that's what I appreciate most about you, Mike. Um, no, you have the decency to take time out of your very, mm. very busy schedule to join us, which more like, like again, nuts and see. <laughs> my guy um i like we said it before we even started this does not happen enough i this was a pure delight to get to do this uh you know so thank you again for coming no, and sharing thank you for having me this was so, I, I love the two of you so much and i think we all have a very similar outlook and energy to not only this show but not only reality tv but life in general. So this is what yeah. happens when like three unstoppable forces meet three <laughs> immovable objects and it is just pure entropy. Mm. Chappelle and I are just openly standing you at all times. And then we just like the three of us just get together and like the worst and best kind of chaos ensues. Uh, it's, it's everything I could hope for um, and more. Um, 
Chappelle, the other very, very busy, uh, hilarious person here. Yeah, you I really picked you the have... worst two people to be with if you had somewhere to be at the end of a podcast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah look. All but... three of us. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't have plugs. I just can't stop talking. <laughs> look, relatable. You have relatable. plug voice. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The three of us just can't uh, stop. <laughs> yeah, this was this was a fun time, Mike. Of course, like Jenny yeah. said, thank you for coming. It's always a yeah. pleasure. As far as I go, recapkickback.com is where I'm doing the most of my podcasting. Uh, we just uh, Gia just joined me to cover uh, Actor Age on Netflix, uh, and so we have a podcast out right now that could uh, that kind of recaps that show and talks about why Netflix should renew it because it looks like it might get canceled. And so check that out on recapkickback.com, recapkickback.com. See, I can do that. Uh, also, um, you can catch out the, uh, the coverage of Abbott Elementary, Summer House Martha's Vineyard as well. And then catch me on RHAP talking about Below Deck with Sasha and talking about Rob, with, uh, talking to Rob about Netflix shows on Nothing But Netflix. So a lot going on as well for me. But again, follow me on all social media platforms at Recap Kickback. And, you know, I I live in two manners at this point. I'm in Goat Manor and MILF Manor. I can't Ooh, believe yes. this is I my, take them my up. life. Right. Um, but, you Which know, one has the more ass-to-mouth action? Which um, one has the most teats? At this point, it's Goat Manor still. <laughs> You'd be, you would <laughs> think there would be more. Um, you know, hopefully in, in the next upcoming episode, we will get a little bit more uh, realfy action in the MILF Manor. Um, so I'm ho hoping uh, I will be back in a short time with hopefully Chappelle. Maybe we'll, definitely some Pui action. We'll see if Rob can be lured back and maybe not. Um, but check that out on the 90 Day Fiance um, feed for the MILF manner action. And and those are my two manners at this point. And you guys are my two man whores. Man, man whores. Yeah. Man whores. You know what? Actually, can I, can I crowdsource a show right now called Manor or Man Whore? Where it's like, okay, mm. you, can, you can have sex with this really great guy, or you could have a house. Or you could have a <laughs> manor. Yeah. Listen, they already told me as a millennial, I don't get to have a house. So I go. gave up on that dream long ago. <laughs> Hopefully most people have. Yeah. <laughs> it I chose gives me more wiggle room. Toast. Yeah. It gives, <laughs> it gives me more it gives me more room to play. Uh yeah, yeah. Definitely don't don't pick the man nor over the man whores in that situation. Mike, I have a suggestion. Can you make the 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 merge tribe, the mommy tribe? of the mothers versus Ooh. mom. Ooh, yeah, we're not simulating yes. the season, but I will definitely put in a request to make it Please and thank you. Mommy. Yeah. Mommy oh. tribe. Yeah, it oh sounds like a tribe, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, we had, it we had a Nami, so it's only it sounds, it's right just there. Can M A M I like yeah, give it mommy. a little bit of like a mommy. like a, a twist? <laughs> yeah, mommy. it's spicy. The yeah. mommy yeah. tribe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then it's like a little, it feels less gross to me than just M O M M Y. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 again, this, this has Rick been, <laughs> this has been the best and the worst. And I'm sorry, um, but I had a great time. So <laughs> that's, that's what matters here. Right? This is the country that puts the U in color. You apologize at the end for the previous hour and 46 minutes. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so we will be back next week with episode seven coverage of the goat. Uh, I'm going to shoot my shot here. I don't think Wendell's out yet. I think, I think we will see Wendell, he, you know, he's underdog point. I think we're, we're not losing Wendell yet, but we will see how that turns out. We'll be back next week. Um, and until then, everyone have a great weekend. Love y'all. Goodbye. <laughs>